Dr. Andrews, my wife heard from a friend that Jesus said nothing about venial and mortal sins, and this was invented by Catholic priests in the 900s A.D. Can you please shed some light on this? Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks. So the list of things that Jesus never said anything about is infinitely long. (laughs) Infinitely long, right? Here's something else that Jesus never said anything about. Jesus never mentioned the inclusion of the book of Jude into the New Testament canon. Hmm. For that matter, Jesus never mentioned the inclusion of any book of the New Testament into the canon of scriptures. So if you really want to go by the I can only believe it if Jesus explicitly taught it criterion, you had better throw away the New Testament because Jesus never mentioned the New Testament as a collection of books, right? And I could go on. The, The number of things that Christians affirm and believe and practice that Jesus never mentioned is, is, is it, it, it's unbelievably long, mm-hmm. right? So that's just not the criterion. Uh, rather, in handing on the faith, Christ uh, appointed the apostles and said, go into all nations and teach everything I have commanded you, uh, and I will be with you until the end of the age, and whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. So when we want to determine the content of Christian faith— Our criterion is not simply what can we find recorded of the words of Christ in sacred scripture, but it's what the church has taught and handed on in obedience to his divine command. That includes, of course, sacred tradition. Now, uh, it it is true that theological reflection on the nature of sin has led to several distinctions and elaborations. You know, St. James writes in his epistle that we all stumble in many ways, but if you want to be a perfect man, control your tongue. He differentiates qualities of the virtuous life from kind of getting there to all the way there. I'll come back to that thought after the break. Yeah, Yeah, so I started before the break pointing out that the criterion, uh, did Jesus explicitly mention it, cannot be used for the practice of the Christian faith because there's literally an infinite number of things that Jesus never mentioned, and many of them fall under the uh, the rubric of, of Christian faith, even for Protestants, even for non-Catholics. Things yeah. like the list of canonical books belonging in the New Testament, for example, something Jesus never said a word about. So mm. if you want to hold to that criteria, you better throw out the New Testament canon of the Bible, right? Um, so that's, uh, that's ridiculous. Now, what Christ did do is he appointed the apostles and their successors to hand on the tradition of the church down through the centuries as the criterion of Christian orthodoxy. You go into all nations, teach everything I've commanded you, I'll be with you to the end of the age. So it's not wrong. In fact, it's mandatory that we consult the wisdom of sacred tradition. Uh, now, as theologians, and you're not wrong that, that there are, theology does develop as, as uh, uh, bishops and intellectuals within the church reflect on the data of Revelation and try to see how to make sense of it, how to apply it in their lives, that there is development in the understanding of sin. Mm-hmm. But it's based on reflection on passages like uh, James chapter 3 or John, 1 John chapter 5. So, you know, St. James says, not many of you should become teachers because those who teach will be judged more strictly. Okay, so there's, there's diversity of criterion to apply to individuals. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he's a perfect man, able to control his whole body. Hmm. So here again, James seems to differentiate classes of Christians in uh, those who stumble, you know, on a daily basis— uh, and then those who have attained to the life of Christian perfection. And we find that that similar categories in the writings of St. Paul as well, those who have milk and need only milk and can't have solid food in the faith and having mm-hmm. to grow up into maturity, that sort of thing. And then, of course, it's uh, St. John, First John chapter 5, that differentiates the sin that leads to death from the sin that does not lead to death. So it, we do find in the New Testament this idea that there are... Uh, differentiation in the way we assess moral reality. And Christ himself, I would argue, does the same thing. He doesn't use the language of venial and mortal sin, but he turns to the Pharisees and he says, uh, you guys tithe mint, dill, and cumin, but you neglect, what do you neglect? The weightier matters of the law, like love and justice and mercy. You should have done the latter without neglecting the former. So in Christ's teaching... There are elements of the law that are obligatory and yet don't count among the weightier matters. Well, what is that but a differentiation in the, in the grades of sin? Sure. 